So we talked a little bit last week about color mixing. Johnny, I need a paper towel, please. And then today we're gonna to talk about some basic painting techniques. You know, how do you use the brush? And so the first thing, uh, there's about four or five things I wanna show you here. Number one, how to make a soft edge. So um, you put one color down, and then while that's wet, clean your brush really quick, get your second color, put it down right next to it. Painting can be intimidating a, because color mixing can be tricky, and B, because working with a wet medium can be a little intimidating. So now while both colors are wet, I cleaned my brush out really well, and I'm gonna to start to work that seam. And the more I brush the seam, the softer that edge gets. So that's soft edge 101. There's other ways to do it, but that's the easiest way, and that's called a wet into wet technique when both colors are wet. I'm gonna come back to that in just a second, and I'm gonna show you how to get a really hard edge. If you've been around here a while, you've, you've heard me say the best way to create the illusion of a, of a real object is to, is to expand your contrast between your soft edges and your hard edges. To really be able to make a very good soft edge and then to be able to make a really good hard edge, that's how you create the uh, illusion of something real. Johnny, could you get that little painting of that leaf off of the, <coughs> off of the um, <coughs> pole in the front of the studio? So, um, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do a small painting for you that's gonna demonstrate about five or six painting techniques. There's my frame. I'm gonna do a hill and a little tribute to my bonsai tree. And I'm gonna do a, a fade. Thank you, Johnny. I'll come back to that in a second. I'm gonna do a fade in the sky. A fade is when two colors gradually transition from one to the other, similar to a soft edge, but it's much broader. So to do a fade, you have to have your two colors pre-mixed I'm just gonna use black and white, and I'm gonna start here, working my way down, and the brush will start to run out of paint. I'm actually gonna do the black twice. I'm gonna do that two passes, because I'm trying to get a lot of paint up here. This is another wet into wet technique. Quickly clean the brush, go to the second color, which will be white. I'm gonna start down here below the hill, working my way in the opposite direction. I'm gonna grab the white again and do that again. You have to be quick on this because temper paint doesn't stay wet very long and this is a wet into wet technique. Got the black again. And you just keep working this process until you get the fade the way you want it. Now that I have a little paint up here, I can start to smooth things out a little bit. <coughs> Takes a little patience, but I'm gonna do the white one more time. Pick up a little bit of this excess down here. All right, 
And I want you to notice I blasted right over the tree and the hill because I'm working with what's called an opaque medium, meaning it's the opposite of transparent. So I can overlap my other colors, um, unlike watercolor or uh, any transparent medium. With an opaque medium, I can overlap. But I'm gonna come back to that in just a second. I wanna come back to this soft edge and I wanna show you how to make a hard edge. The, the easiest way to make a really hard edge is to start with a soft edge, just like this. And I'm gonna load my brush up. I'm loading it on both sides like this. I'm tapping like this and like this. I'm not dunking into the paint like that. I'm just kind of tapping both sides like that. Now I have a loaded brush. And by the way, I could have used the black, but I'm gonna use the white. Now I'm gonna press on this side of the brush a little bit, and I'm gonna overlap the soft edge. And that's how you get a really hard edge, by starting with a soft edge when you're painting. Um, so I pressed on that side of the brush to get that nice crisp edge. What's the advantage to a soft edge? Well, first of all, some things have soft edges, like clouds, for example. And if you paint hair a certain way, you'll paint it with very soft edges. But also, soft ed when you have soft edges between two colors, it's easier to change those colors because you're not locked down on that edge. If I needed to change this, ed this color slightly, it would be much easier to do it down here where I have a soft edge than it would be up here where I have a hard edge. So once you commit to those hard edges, you are sort of have, want to be near the end of your painting because it's much easier to make changes when you have a soft edge. And the beginning of a painting, as many of you know, we're, we're making lots of changes. Um, just to come back to my comment on creating the illusion of realism, here's a small painting of a leaf, about a four hour painting. Um, and what creates the illusion of the real uh, dimension and form is the contrast between some of these very soft edges that you can see in places. And there's actually quite a few lost edges here. You know, there's no edge right here. There's no edge right here. There's, I don't see much of an edge right here. Um, there's quite a few lost edges around. But in, then in contrast, all these really razor sharp little edges, those were all done in the last 10 minutes of this painting. And it's that contrast between the hard edges and the soft edges that give that the illusion of, of form. So I'm going to come back now to the um, landscape and I'm going to put my hill back in. I'm going to overlap the sky and cut a hard edge by pressing on the top of my brush a little bit. Got to be careful how hard I press down because that white paint underneath is still wet. And now this is called feathering. I'm feathering into the back side of that brush stroke. I'm going to leave the top edge alone because that's going to be the top edge of my hill. You know, when you cut that hard edge for the hill, you want to try to do that with a single brush stroke because the more you come back and mess with that or tamper with it, it's going to take away from that sharp edge. And you'll end up with an edge that's not really sharp, not really soft, somewhere in between, and that's not good. And I hope you also notice when you overlap the hill in front of the sky, now the sky feels like it goes behind the hill because literally I overlapped it. Um, now I'm gonna put the tree on and the sky will feel like it's behind it as well for the same reason. And I want you to notice, this will be the first time I'm not using the brush like you would have when you're painting your kitchen like this. I'm gonna be using the brush, I'm gonna be using the side of the brush, the edge of the brush, the tips of the brush, just to try to create kind of a, 
I, I don't know if you noticed that, but I flipped from all the way from working like this to come around to working like that. And I'm, I'm just trying to use the edges of the brush in a more creative and interesting way uh, to, to make my tree. By the way, I always like to tell this little story. This is a tribute to my bonsai tree that I bought on Reading Road when it was nine years old. And I owned it till it was 12 and then it died on my patio. I thought I over watered it, but by the way, for this tree lint, for this tree um, trunk, I'm really patting this brush both sides to get the paint to kind of try to squish that together as much as possible. And then just using kind of the edge of the brush to try to make that little and my tree had another little limb that went like this. It was quite beautiful. I don't know what happened to it. I suspect insects killed it because I'm told you can't overwater it. We had a lot of rain that summer and I thought water killed it. But I did some research and I found out you really can't overwater a bonsai tree. Of course, there are many kinds of bonsai trees. But none was quite as special as mine. Anyway, there's my little landscape. Okay, I want to show you a few other little concepts about painting. But see how that sky goes behind that? That's because you're just overlapping. It's not, it's not that hard to do. It takes a little practice, but it's not that big of a deal. All right, so I want to show you what a flat shape is. A flat shape is like you're painting your kitchen wall. Actually, I think technically a flat shape would have all hard edges. When I start to soften edges, Or I make parts of this shape a little lighter. Or a little darker. That, that all falls under the category of modeling. I was modeling that shape. M-O-T-T-L-I-N-G. I was putting variations in it to create kind of a visual texture. So you'll sometimes hear us tell, ask a student to do a flat block in. That means they put all their colors up flat, then later they do this modeling, and then at the end they do, you know, any little details. Now, if I were to go like this, that's so dark that it doesn't want to feel like it's part of this shape. So I, I over modeled there. I'd have to back that down a little bit to get that to feel like it's part of this shape, but it's just slightly different. So that's a very important concept in painting, the idea of modeling. Johnny, I'm gonna need a round, a small round brush. Round brush. Yeah. Uh, then I, got, I just have two more things to show you real quick. One is, guys, don't lean on the table, please. Sometimes the easiest way to get a shape is with the color around it. Like, can you see this on the TV? Okay. Um, I'm trying to make a leaf, but I really can't get it to come to a point here very easily. Thank you, John. So the color around it, I'm gonna use the color around it To get that little point. 
That's helpful to know if you're doing things with corners like windows in a building or leaves that have little points in them. Any time, almost any shape. If you can't make it from the inside, try making it from the outside. The last thing I want to show you is uh, Sometimes you have a shape like a tree branch that tapers. It starts out thick and then it gets thinner. So the best brush for that is called a round. Um, it's just literally a round brush. And the, the nice thing about it is you can spin it. Now I am putting a little water in the paint. So the paint's a little liquidy for this and I'm pressing on the brush so it's nice and wide. And then as I'm going up, I'm gonna lift off. And the round shape of the brush will allow that to taper. So you press and lift. Press and lift off. You might be able to see as I'm doing that, I'm slightly spinning the brush. Now you don't have to do that, but spinning the brush allows you to let paint from come out from all around the brush instead of just one side where it won't last quite as long. And the final thing that I wanted to show you is on a tree, when you get way out to the smallest branches, If you don't want to paint thousands and thousands of little tiny branches, this is an interesting technique. I put some wet paint here so that I could get some little smudgy shapes. What I'm looking for is some, just some blurry shapes. tried to put some white paint down earlier so that I could do this wet into wet, but um, it was kind of drying up a little bit. The idea is that um, from a distance, I'm going to try to soften some of these edges a little bit. It's hard to do on paper. and put a few branches back in. From a distance, these, these blurry shapes will read as hundreds of little branches. Read means look like or create the illusion of. So we use that technique when we're painting hair or anytime you have hundreds or thousands of little tiny things. That's it.